my wonderful wife and I have been talking about faith and God's calling and how he gets us where he gets us and how we follow him and something I've been feeling in my heart the past few days that I've been sharing with people is that God wants to start doing some crazy cool exciting things and one thing he doesn't want us to do is to give up on our dreams to give up on our or to lose hope in the desires and the things that he's put in our heart so many times we have so many crazy dreams and ideas and then there's like there seems to be no road to it you know and then if you do listen to what those self-help guys say they say well just plow through it who cares who gets in your way throw them out throw your friends out throw your family out just grind until you get it you know and and I never subscribe to that kind of stuff you know uh, my wife says was well, pretty crazy how it happened the first time we got to Japan I was like it was pretty crazy it happened out of sheer obedience following God step taking steps of faith and action moving with him and knowing he's faithful to do what he said he would do even though the actions he's telling us to do is like self-sabotage it's like you're not supposed to do this or give anything away you're supposed to scrimp and save and be logical about everything and I and I get it you know do whatever God's telling you to do and whatever it looks like that's cool but we're not supposed to lose hope because what he's trying to do in this next season with us in our lives and in your life and this COVID stuff is going to disappear and be an ancient memory and a new thing will come up and people are eventually going to realize, man, it's time to live. I feel like things are going to speed up and, and, and get amplified. You know, business opportunities, wealth, the way that the world's going to run, it's just going to keep going faster and faster and faster. And I'm seeing that together as one, as a family, as a body, we're going to work together and move and follow him and what he has for us. So I'm encouraging you guys and I'm encouraging myself, if this is just for me, that we're going to have a pretty exciting, awesome life. There's no way that we can spend time with him, delighting in him every day, and that's all he tells us to do. And then he says, it's time to go. And I'm like, God, but you failed us financially. That That's asinine you know that doesn't even enter our minds it doesn't enter our minds to even wonder where or how or when like I don't care I'm just doing what he asked of me to do and that's to delight in him because what we're enjoying with him is much more exciting than anything we've had when we had it you know because there's times when you can have things going for you and life is great and everything's working out but how about when nothing's working out how about when there's a plane buzzing over your head <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get myself a pilot's license and fly one of those little crop dusters. And in my dreams I've had where I flew on a jet, a little crop duster, some kind of plane somewhere in Africa, and the devil sent some kind of freak wind storm or something. It knocks my plane out. I know I was going to be fine. I got out, but I felt bad that I lost someone's plane because I was borrowing it. And then I just wrote them a $70,000 check to go get themselves a new crop duster. And I was like, that's pretty cool to have those kind of dreams. Because I know I want to be able to fly around and be able to know what I'm doing just to enjoy and explore and be able to see God's uh, earth from a different perspective. <clears throat> but yeah, the whole thing of never losing hope. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, even if nothing worked out, even if you had bad circumstances, it all built relationship and intimacy. And if you didn't go to God in the difficult times, more difficult times will come and at some point you have to build friendship or intimacy with God or you'll just keep growing through frustrations in the flesh or you can trust him and enjoy him and then grow by the spirit and enjoy him in, in the way he truly intends you to so I know my life doesn't make sense and a lot of people say how can you have faith like that how can you even live like that your faith is limited and you're thinking limited and that's okay because I have my own heart and my or own belief. Or they're amazed. Or they're amazed. But either way, whether it's good or bad, typically we always remember the bad. <laughs> I have some friends say good things about me, and then you can't say good things about yourself. Only other people can. <laughs> but like Donald Trump always says <laughs> things about himself. <laughs> they say I'm the best, kindest guy that ever lived. <laughs> they say I'm the meekest man that ever lived. <laughs> you know, like Moses did that. But anyway just depends on how people choose to think and see <clears throat> we think it's pretty awesome the people that we met like our friend Kyoshi in Japan 
and just other friends that we meet and that we love. They're so pretty awesome folks that like it was worth just going there and loving the people and trusting God in every step of the way. My wife's like, it's pretty exciting how everywhere we went, like God kept opening up opportunities, opening up the doors and we had no clue where we're going, what we're doing. We just had glimpses of dreams and visions and imagine getting a dream and moving to a country by a dream and, and then you hear the Lord, but it's all based off of visions and dreams and it's crazy to live this way, but that's the only way I know to live because I trust him. I've depended on him for so long and he's never let me down. But he hasn't let me down today, but he might tomorrow. And that's what we always hear, you know. Well, what if tomorrow doesn't work out? What if the next day? And it's like, who cares? Are you delighting in him? Are you enjoying him? Do you have fellowship and trust with him today? Then who cares about tomorrow? And it might suck for some people to live one day at a time and to live every day and kind of depend on God every day, you know? I'm not so much depending on people. If everybody throws me out and says, we hate you, get out of our life, and everyone throws me out, I'm going to do just fine because my dependency is not on people. It's great to have people in our life, but we must always keep our dependency on Christ and what he says to us because as my friends or my wife would be like, well, what's the next step? Well, what are we doing? I just have to go to the Lord and say, your daughter is asking me questions. I don't have all the answers. Don't you have those questions? I don't have every answer to. So, Daddy, can you please help me out? And he's just like, rest, delight, and enjoy me today. Don't worry about it. I got you. I'll take care of you. Have faith. Trust. Faith. And I'm like, God, this kind of stinks. Don't you get tired of walking by faith? Isn't this what this life is about? Where's our friendship and trust? How bad do you have to do to where you throw your fist up at God and say you failed me you know is, is that what you want me to do God do you want me to get mad at you for failing me he never has he never will and that's the beauty and I can't express it in any way I can't even teach it well enough yet I can only live it to the best of my abilities and that's how I try to teach by my lifestyle by my example without hurting people without taking advantage of people and abusing them and he's always come through. He's never been late. Sometimes I think he's late, but he's always right on time. You want to share anything? Yes, you do. He always wants to. She's always piping up on the camera. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're just so enjoying. Like, don't tell me that this isn't the Lord. My question to you is, what are you going to do after all this COVID scam stuff? What's the next step in your life? Say all the borders open up. Say everything goes back to normal and then everything amplifies, businesses exceed, everything excels. What will you do with your life? How will your life change? How will your life be affected? And to me, it's like, what difference does it make? My life never changed. It was always the same. It always enjoyed the Lord. It was always consistent. It was always joyful. It was always peaceful. What, what, what do you need? Do I need to you know flash cash <laughs> in the camera to prove to you of God's glory and success it's like what do we need to do to prove to people that we walk with him I think the best thing is just to have a nature that shines that lives that loves because most people when you put them under the pressure all the Jesus loves you God is good all the time amen amen praise the Lord all that goes out the window and say people who are in persecuted countries where they're being tortured, killed, or abused for their faith. Where's their hallelujahs and amens and praises the Lord's? All that goes out the window. They're like, God, you left me. Where are you, God? You know, two towers fall in New York and everyone's like, where are you, God? You have our attention. Excuse me. He doesn't give you that kind of attention. He's not trying to destroy towers to get your attention. He's been trying to get your attention every day. You just ignored him. I think during persecution, and during this COVID time, if you didn't spend time resting and trusting and enjoying the Lord, start now. Because when things start picking up and everyone's moving around and hustling and bustling and things start going out of control, you're going to say, I wish I would have enjoyed the Lord a little more. I wish I would have had time to pray. Man, during COVID, I didn't seek God. I didn't trust him. I was worried. and I listened to the media. I think this is the time we grow. Maybe one thing I'd like to do is what I learned what I took away, what I found valuable, what God taught me.
constantly in the Bible, they kept saying, do not forget the children in Israel for 40 years. Don't be like them. Don't forget. Remember what happened. And, uh -huh. and just because things start loosening up and life may feel more comfortable because you get to be around each other. You can go to the movies. You can have dinner at a restaurant or whatever. Or you get back in the office. What did we learn? What did we grow in? Don't forget. Don't lose that. Build upon you know, it wasn't God destroying and trying to cause corruption. But we're going to take what happened and completely turn it for good. More and more and more. That's what I want to do. Yeah. But we see people who don't live with God like the Israelites. God kept saying, don't forget me. When you have your businesses and your money and your houses and everything's nice, don't forget me. And they forgot him. And he kept warning them. So I think that's the importance of renewing our minds to God's word because... What I hated the most is we were so wrapped up with business and making money and helping people and we're doing good. But 24-7 you're grinding your gears to do Jesus-y things. I hated it. I think back and I'm thinking to the peace that I have now to go back to that lifestyle of success and money and everybody's business is cloned down, closing down, COVID is closing everything down. I'm traveling across Japan, handing out masks to boxes and boxes to people and they're saving people with it and their businesses are thriving and we're thriving and life is great and we're like God's amazing he told us and he showed us and we can talk about the glories of it but man what I found out is it destroyed people the prosperity the money the way that people try to grow in God it started uh, consuming them because if God's not consuming your heart now money will consume you at some point so I think that's the beauty that I really found out that, man, it feels so peaceful. I feel like I can walk into a boardroom with these guys and be at peace because I have trust in him versus the first time we went. I was so, like, nervous and, like, worried and trying to be money conscious and do God's will. And it was just yuck. There was no faith in there, hardly any. So, and God still did as much as he could with our ability and our faith and our trust. But I feel like it's grown to a whole new perspective. So I feel like you people are incredible, and God wants to do so many incredible things with you. So we love you guys, and we encourage you to keep trusting him and moving with him and enjoy him now as things are going to pick up real quick. So God bless you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.